Hi everyone, CG Seb here and we are back for another Metagalyzer tutorial. So for those who don't know, Metagalyzer is an add-on for a Blender and it is for texturing objects. So today I'm going to talk about the mask in Metagalyzer. So uh, in Metagalyzer you have usually uh, this setup or a more complex one but you are basically mixing two layers together. And the way it works, it's, it takes a mask input here uh, to actually say which layer to use where. So uh, if you press F, uh, you will have the mask on the right here and you have multiple ones. So first of all, you have the all edges uh, this is a very uh, basic one that you might use uh, in a lot of cases. Uh, this is a little bit bright. Let me put this this way. Boom. So this mask will automatically be plugged if you select before and then press this one. If it's not plugged, then plug this here and you have the settings. So basic settings, you have the distance, uh, this is how, uh, how far it goes from the edge. So you might need to press shift to go slower or just put it like that. And what does the all edges? Because if you press F, you also have edges. And the difference between those two is actually uh, the all edges will also make here on the inside edges. So, and this is the difference between those two. Uh, if you plug this one, for example, you will see that uh, if you put lower, you will have only the outer edges um, shown. So not the, the one inside here. So that's the difference between th those two. Um, so that's very simple uh, masks. Another one that you will use a lot is the cavity one. Uh, this one is actually uh, also in the edges, but only the edges inside here. Uh, so it is used in a lot of cases uh, to make like dirt or something, something uh, like it has dirt on it. And this is pretty uh, pretty useful to make those kind of effects here and here. Uh, so very basic mask. Um, one input that is very important in the cavity or in the um, all edge mask is the texture here. You see you have texture. So if we take back this one and we actually make a color that we can see better. Uh, you can actually make it a little bit more random because this is very uniform everywhere. Uh, you can actually go in the fluence panel and grunges and you can plug a grunge here. So the result into the texture and it makes it a little bit more random as you can see. And now you can play with this and the seed to make something more uh, realistic. So the texture node uh, here, texture inputs, is something that you have on the edges and the cavity. All right, so we're done with this one. Uh, if we press F, we also have directional. Uh, this one is more the direction of it. So by default is from the top to the bottom. So if you see here, we change the strength, it actually changed. Um, the cool thing here is that you have uh, two modes. So the first mode is zero, it's the normal mode, uh, meaning that it will affect all the normals of your object that are pointing to this direction, so the ball direction here. And if you change it to objects, it will actually um, be based on the height of the whole object. So 
that's two different modes. Um, so first here, uh, you can see the different settings that you can have. Um, those are actually for this part. So this is pretty cool. And if you want to change the direction, because by default is from top to bottom, you can actually move this ball and it will change. So it's not only from top to bottom, but it can be on the side like that. And uh, you can actually play with this and move it around like you want. So that's pretty, pretty useful. If you change this in the contrast, you can start seeing here the um, it's fading and this is actually this fade that you can control in this second part you can see here um, the seed is actually the change of this so uh, this is basically uh, the direction uh, you can actually change here the border of it so it has a border everywhere and this border is actually controlled by this. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you can also plug a texture. So of course you need to play. Uh, this trench is actually uh, the trench of the texture that you just put here. So it is how, um, how impactful it will be this. So you can create some really cool uh, painting effect. And if you want it only on the edge, I can reduce strength and just make it like it is starting to, to be scratched, like the paint is going away or something like that. So that's pretty, pretty nice. So that was it for the um, directional mask. Then we have the paint mask. So the paint mask is actually meant to be used with another mask. So you can use it alone, that, that's okay. If you click here, paint, uh, it will automatically attach it to your mix layer and it will switch automatically to uh, the material preview and the paint texture here. So you can paint, say I want this, then I want something like that and you can see it's in black and white and the reason why it's in black and white it's because it's in a preview mode and you are previewing this paint mask so what you can do is actually uh, if you have a node wrangler add-on enabled this is a default uh, Blender add-on, this is free. Uh, if it's enabled, you can control shift, click on this, and you will be back to the texture mode. Uh, it needs a little bit of time to, to load, but then you can see more what you're doing and the color. Um, note that this is a EV preview. So you might have um, some preview that are not really accurate like you did with a uh, cycle because this is needed uh, it is actually a limitation from blender uh, this is not a limitation from uh, flint materializer but as you can see if i switch to cycle here uh, we don't see what is painting here because cycle it doesn't um, automatically uh, refresh this paint mask so I need to go and then go back here to actually see the changes I made. So this is why we are in preview material for the painting. Okay, so that's the basic paint. Uh, you can actually use the paint to remove a part of a mask. So let's say I have an edge. Let's say I have a, I have a edge here and I don't want the edge everywhere. So I just select the mask, press F, 
and then the minus the minus it will make a difference so it added two nodes a difference node and a paint mask so now what we do is what we paint is actually gonna make a difference with the all edges um, to see better I'm gonna preview this BSDF and boom so we are using the all edges uh, the all edges is not working very well with uh, EV and with the preview material so let's say I'm gonna paint here so you, we can not see the result but we're gonna go to cycle after that to see the result so I paint here on this front part and this will actually remove the edge for all of this part and you can see here uh, we can paint my brush is actually not to one so you can put your brush to one and then you need to refresh and boom as you can see it removes where you paint and uh, this is because we choose this minus if you choose the um, x here times it will actually uh, paint uh, on the other way around so let's say I have this I remove I put this back now I want to work the other way around so instead of removing I want to be only adding so you select your edge or your cavity or your directional it works with uh, most of the mask and you press here. now what you can see if you go back in this mode and then go back you can see that we have nothing and now what we're gonna do is the painting is actually gonna reveal the edges instead of removing it so we are working uh, the other way around that's the different uh, workflow depending on what you want and you can see we painted only those areas so that's pretty uh, pretty useful um, so that's it for the paint mask uh, pretty nice you have here uh, different settings that you can affect the mask uh, plug texture like we do every time you can plug it here and change the strength of of it so we can make some cool effect like this uh, and it, it will affect the paint uh, mask here so very useful uh, but it uses a uh, a lot of resources and it's it's a little bit tedious because uh, cycles is not taking into account painting uh, of blender this is blender uh, limitation unfortunately all right uh, so that was for the basic mask that we have here but uh, in fluence you actually have uh, other nodes that you can use as mask every node that are in black and white you can actually use them as mask you can use for example the dented and you plug the mask into the mask and now you have those kind of effects so that's pretty cool um, this is uh, very useful you can of course make multiple masks or let's say I want some scratches and I want them to be here too so um, to actually mix two masks together uh, you're gonna press F and go to lighten so you plug those masks and now boom it appears like this so this is pretty fun. Boom. Um, you have a very useful uh, grunges that we already use. Uh, this one is it's pretty nice. It's a gradient. Uh, I, I will let you um, find by yourself 
uh, the difference and test them. Uh, those are actually uh, very, very nice to use like this. Um, you have also the pattern here and those are very uh, useful. You can use them as a mask and create some recall effects. So yeah, that was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and see you on the next one.